Thank you so much for being here, and thank you to the conference team for having me. Let's begin. Imagine you wake up in the morning and see this headline, Bitcoin hacked by quantum computers. You check a portfolio and realize the coins have been moved to an unknown address. Bitcoin's price is down 90%. All crypto exchanges are down. The community is in disbelief and fear. This is the future I pictured in my head every time I saw those loud headlines about quantum computers. I'm a Bitcoiner, and most of my portfolio is in Bitcoin. The so-called quantum apocalypse is definitely not part of my future plans. I want Bitcoin to succeed, so I started looking for answers, first for myself. But as I went deeper, I realized my findings might help others too, at least to understand what's really going on. I'm not a quantum cryptographer, and I don't pretend to be one. But I'm a YouTuber who loves breaking down complex topics. So I decided to gather the most important details and explain this potential threat in the most straightforward way possible. I spoke with some of the brightest minds in quantum cryptography who helped me understand and summarize everything into a clear 10-minute talk that I hope every Bitcoiner can follow. Let's start with the general issue. To simplify things, let's say that Bitcoin security is built on private keys and public keys. The mathematical problem of finding a private key from its public key is called the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem, or ECDLP. Bitcoin signature schemes rely on elliptic curve cryptography, specifically the SEC-256K1 curve. For classical computers, solving the ECDLP is practically impossible. That's why publishing a public key or a signature doesn't reveal your private key. But that changes once a powerful quantum computer can run Shor's algorithm. Shor's algorithm takes advantage of quantum properties like superposition, where qubits can represent many possible states at the same time. Unlike classical computers, a quantum computer with Shor's algorithm can solve the ECDLP exponentially faster. In other words, it could calculate a private key from its public key. And now before we start talking about the ongoing developments and predictions around when Q-Day might happen, let's clear up one common misconception. If a quantum computer ever becomes powerful enough to hack Bitcoin, people often assume it could also hack nuclear codes or destroy the entire banking system. Not exactly. Nuclear command and control systems and many industrial control systems are deliberately air-gapped run on decades-old hardware and operate under strict procedures with multi-step manual approvals, so they aren't exposed to remote cryptographic attacks. And as for banking systems, many operations can be manually paused, transactions can be frozen or reversed, and software can be updated quickly. We're talking about centralized systems. So no, a quantum computer doesn't automatically make banks helpless. And since building and operating a powerful quantum computer costs tens of millions of dollars, no one's going to do that unless the payoff is truly worth it. So rationally, Bitcoin could be a much easier target for a quantum attack. So when is Q-Day? That's the million dollar question many experts are still trying to answer. Most agree that the latest update from PsyQuantum isn't just another headline. For those who haven't heard, the company plans to build a fault-tolerant quantum computer with a million qubits by the end of 2027. If that roadmap holds, 2027 could technically be the year in a worst case scenario, since some experts believe a fault tolerant quantum computer with a million qubits could be enough to crack Bitcoin. Quantum scientist Pierre Luc Delaire de Maris gives it about a 10 to 20% chance of happening in 2027, around 50% by 2029, and by 2033, he predicts it will likely happen very publicly. Now let's talk about the risk list. Which addresses are actually at risk and how many Bitcoins are we talking about? According to independent blockchain researchers and Project 11's analysis, the total BTC exposed to a potential quantum attack is estimated at around 6.7 million coins, roughly one-third of Bitcoin's total supply. That includes early Satoshi-era coins that used formats like P2PK, pay-to-public key, where public keys are directly exposed on chain, Reused addresses, since pending from them exposes the public key, and any address that has already revealed its public key on the blockchain. The good news is most modern wallets use native SegWit addresses. They automatically generate a new address for each receiving transaction, keeping your public keys hidden until you spend. So don't spend. 
don't, don't share your public keys and don't reuse addresses. Keep your privacy tight and stack sets quietly. Now let's talk about a hypothetical scenario. Quantum computers aren't available to regular people like us. They're massive, extremely expensive to run and maintain, and require highly specialized materials plus extreme infrastructure like cryogenics and rare components. Many experts believe these strategic tools will be tightly regulated by governments, similar to how companies like SpaceX operate today. So when we talk about potential quantum hackers in the future, we're likely talking about governments, not individuals, at least in the short term. Based on public data, the US is currently ahead in most areas of quantum computing while China is advancing very fast and keeps much of its real progress confidential. Some experts speculate that China could reach the capability to crack Bitcoin sooner, though for now that's just speculation. Let's focus on public data. Obviously, companies like Google or Microsoft aren't going after Bitcoin. I don't think so. A more realistic and legally grounded scenario could be the government making an unclaimed property legal case and obtaining untouched Satoshi era coins at a discounted price by hiring a, a private contractor such as SciQuantum, for example, to add those coins to the US strategic Bitcoin reserve. But even in this relatively okay hypothetical scenario, it could still set a very bad precedent. So what could save Bitcoin? There are a few public discussions and Bitcoin improvement proposals out there but the most active and mature one so far is BIP360 created by Hunter Beast. How does it work? BIP360 introduces a new address type called PTTSH, pay to tap script hash. It lets people move their coins into quantum ready addresses that can use post quantum signature schemes, all through a soft fork. It's built to keep public keys hidden until they're needed, protecting users from early exposure. That's for active wallets. But what about old and touch Satoshi era coins. That's where Hourglass, a companion proposal to BIP360, comes in. Hourglass doesn't freeze or take anyone's coins. Instead, it rate limits how quickly those vulnerable coins can be spent. After activation, only one legacy P2PK spam would be allowed per block. That means if someone tries to steal and dump a massive number of old Bitcoins, they'll have to do it slowly over months while competing for limited block space, which reduces the risk of a sudden mass theft. And here is the good news. Just a few weeks ago, Hunter Beast and his team successfully made the first BIP360 transaction on Signet. So we already have a work and proof of concept. Now comes the hard part, going live. For that, everyone needs to agree that BIP360 is the right path forward. And that's one, that's one reason I'm raising the quantum threat here at Bitcoin Mina. I'm a Bitcoiner, I'm hodler. I want peace of mind knowing my Bitcoin is safe. And I think many of you do too. So let's support BIP360 and make this transition happen as soon as possible. I tend to believe that just like nuclear weapons, quantum computers will be used responsibly, even by countries like China. I really hope I'm not wrong. But in Bitcoin, we say trust, but verify. We have Hunter Beast and his BIP360 proposal. And we know a cryptographically relevant quantum computer could exist as soon as 2027. It's time to move from talk to real action. Let's protect Bitcoin together first, and then embrace the good side of the post-quantum world. And if in 20 or 30 years, quantum computers help humans dramatically extend life or even achieve clinical immortality, I'll be happy to celebrate the last mine Bitcoin with all of you in 2140. Cheers to that. Thank you so much, guys.